Can I have one? Get it. Pick it up. Whoa. It's a big one. You want mama to wash it? Yeah, we'll wash it. What do you think? What is that? Can I see it? Whoa. It's huge. It's huge. Hi, welcome back to my kitchen. I wanted to show you how to confirm the species of a mushroom. If you find a mushroom in the woods and it matches the physical description of everything you've studied or you can compare in a book or an app, there's another way that you can confirm the ID so you can confidently prepare and eat a wild foraged edible mushroom. So um, the way you do that is you take a spore print of the mushroom. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And even if you don't intend to eat these mushrooms, it's really fun to lay out a piece of paper. And if you find random mushrooms, um, to take a spore print of them because they just, they look really cool. So here's how you do that. I'm gonna tip the camera so you can see what I am doing here. I have, let's see if this will let me, there we go. I just have a small piece of paper because we are only um, doing a single spore print today. So I'm going to take my paring knife and I am going to cut the stalk of the mushroom away as flush or as close to the cap of the mushroom as I can get. So you can see this, such a cool lavender color. And then what you're going to do is put that uh, gill side, so all these little folds in the mushroom are called the gills. This is also known as the fertile surface because the spores of the mushroom come out of the gills. So for this mushroom, um, we're going to put it gill side down on this piece of paper, right in the middle there. And then um, I just have a piece of Tupperware that will fit over it. You wanna make sure the air is really still and undisturbed so the spores can fall straight down onto the piece of paper. Um, if you have any kind of a breeze or anything like that, it will disturb the spore print and you might not get one or be able to really see clearly the neat pattern. What I love about spore prints is that they end up looking like the iris of your eye. Um, for this particular species, this is known as the blue leg mushroom or the bluet. This mushroom is supposed to have a very pale pink spore print. So I'm going to let this sit somewhere where cats, fallon, no one is going to be messing with this. I'm going to set it up on a shelf so it won't be disturbed. Then I'm going to come back 24 hours later and we will check out the spore print. I wanted to quickly show you the other wild mushroom that we foraged today in the woods. Um, the bluet has a very unique, um, hard to mistake identity. So that's why I'm showing you that one. The second one, really there's nothing else in the woods that looks like it. And so that's why I feel comfortable talking about it and recommending it for a wild forage to you all, um, but this is the classic puffball mushroom. Um, I remember the first time I saw one of these, I thought someone had kicked a volleyball into the woods or something like that, like the wind had taken it and dropped it. Um, and it was a huge puffball. I like to harvest them when they're between these two sizes. Um, when they are this size, they're really firm you never want to pick or eat a mushroom, the, the puffball mushroom, if it's soft, if your finger can break through the skin, because that is um, beyond the time where you would want to eat it. And that's when the spores are starting to, um, are fully mature and they're getting ready. The skin, this skin will dry out, it'll crack open and those spores almost look like smoke drifting out and away to find their new home and grow. So spores are kind of like the microscopic seeds of mushrooms. And so we've been having a lot of rain the past few days and I just thought it'd be a perfect time to poke around. And sure enough, I found a scattering of fresh puffball mushrooms. And um, it's 
very firm and about the size of a softball is the way you want to go. Um, I'm going to take a damp cloth and clean any of the dirt or substrate that is still attached to this mushroom. Um, and you can prepare it almost like you would tofu. So you're going to slice it and then just like tofu where it absorbs whatever flavor you choose to cook it in or with, um, this mushroom has a very neutral flavor. So we're gonna fry it in butter with fresh herbs and it will have a tofu-like consistency and texture. Um, and with a little mushroomy kick. So I am going to show you that. All right, so I finished cleaning my mushrooms. Um, now I'm gonna show you how to cut them into steaks. I'm not gonna remove any of this outer skin because the puffball is small enough that you don't really need to. The skin should be just fine. Um, and also, as an additional reminder, every mushroom that you wild forage, whether it's morel mushrooms in the spring or puffballs and bluets and hen of the woods, chicken of the woods, all of the mushrooms that you can forage in the fall that are edible should be fully cooked before you enjoy them. So let me show you how I'm gonna cut this up. All right, um, I'm gonna remove this base. And your mushroom should be white in the center. I'm gonna start from this side. I'm going to want to eat probably these slices. I might discard this back end because there's just a couple little pits in there that I don't know if I wanna eat. Um, so we're going for about a half inch thick per slice. I'm gonna take the top off this too. All right, cool. I'm gonna discard that. Um, so let me show you what I'm gonna be cooking with. So I have wild garlic that grows in my garden um, and along my fence, so I grabbed some of that. So this is going to be like little mini garlic cloves. Also have some wild onion shoots for flavor and some basil and then butter, lots of butter. Okay, so I have my butter melted um, on a medium high heat. Let's put the mushrooms in. I added just a little bit of salt, pepper, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. Well, <laughs> I just dropped one, so now we have this, and that's all. There we go. I'm going to sprinkle these herbs around so they can cook along with the mushrooms. Basically, it's going to soak up all this butter. That's the goal. That's the garlic. All right, we'll let those cook for a few minutes and when they are golden brown, I'm going to flip them. Oh wow, they're cooking fast. Just a couple more minutes. I'm just sort of edging this butter up around the mushrooms so they get maximum butter coverage. <laughs> I'm adding some green onion at the last second. I think it'll make it taste good. Okay, so I cooked it on medium high heat with the herbs and butter and um, I've removed it from the heat and I've plated it. I garnished it with a little bit of wild onion, hit it with a little bit more salt and pepper, and I'm going to try it and we'll see how it tastes. So let me show you what it looks like. All right, 
right there she is. Let's get into it. Can you see that? It's kind of like a portobello tofu -y type steak. It's good. Very faint mushroom taste. Um, it's soft, which not in a bad way. It's just softer than I thought it would end up being. But it really doesn't taste too much like mushrooms at all. It tastes like a tofu that's been fried in really yummy stuff. It's good. It's good. It always feels kind of weird to pick something out of the woods by yourself and feel confident enough to, you know, that is the correct ID for this mushroom and then prepare it and actually eat it. Um, I don't know, when I first started picking mushrooms and even still, it's like, wow, I didn't get this at the store. Is this okay for me to eat this? And um, yeah, the answer is yes. We have so many amazing natural resources here where we live. And so I really encourage everyone to Get out into the woods, poke around a little bit, and if you find something and you ID it, cook it, enjoy it, and share the knowledge with other people. Enjoy!